Hey everybody, this is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be doing a Puzzles and Dragons video. This one is requested by Josu Torres, I think is how you say the name. I could be wrong, that could be Josu Torres. Apologies if I'm getting the name wrong. Uh, they had asked if I could make a video describing how to get Murr and how to get all of her evolution material and maybe make this a little bit easier. Now, I've never done a video like this, so I'm sorry if things are a little bit odd or I'm not fully expressive. If you have any questions about this, be sure to leave them down in the comments and I will be sure to try to make them as clear as I possibly can. So the card in question is Murr, which you get from the dungeon Timeless Boundaries Dragon on either Mythical Plus or Legend Plus. Legend Plus is going to be easier. The footage I have going right now is of me doing it on the Mythical Plus difficulty, but you do not need to do it on this difficulty to get her. And the site I'm going to be referencing here is called PuzzlesAndDragonsX.com and I would highly recommend anybody with any questions about dungeons or materials to go to this website. It's not always the most up-to-date website, but it is probably the best English related site that will show you every single monster that they have cataloged and where to get all the monsters as well as their dungeons. But their dungeons are mostly the point where they're not very up to date because sometimes things will be all over the place here. The team I am using currently is a combo based team. So the fifth floor here is only talking about Mythical Plus. If you're not playing on Mythical Plus and you're playing on Legend, you don't have to worry about this. This is likely going to be the hardest floor or the second hardest floor. Um, the Preachers here can do a lot of damage and they have a massive amount of defense which means you're likely not going to break through their defense with just raw damage. Um, guard Break can work here and so can any skills that do a certain designated amount of damage. So anything that says it does, you know, 999 damage to all targets, that'll kill this whole floor without any trouble. So moving on to the sixth floor, which is Wee Jazz. And this guy is kind of a pain. The 75% damage reduction is difficult to get over, especially with his 6 million health. But what becomes worse is the longer this goes on, the more likely he is to start putting poison on the board. And there is the possibility of when you knock him low, he could just kill you. So watch out for this one. Not too many tips I can really give here other than just make sure that either you chip him out a little bit at a time while still surviving and then hit him hard to kill him. And then the seventh and eighth floor are Murr herself and she is rather difficult. If you knock her low, she can just hit you with 200% gravity, which will likely kill you. Uh, but breaking through the first form isn't the most difficult. It's getting through the second form, where then she has 50% damage reduction from dark. She has this in both forms. So dark teams are going to have a little bit harder time dealing with her, but not too much because dark already does well against light. So the damage reduction pretty much means that you're going to go equal with it. The real big thing that she has is that she's immune to a single hit that damages over 500,000 for 5 turns. This is very difficult to get over because either it means you're going to be hitting her slightly because she still has 14 million health at least on Legend Plus. There are a few ways to get over this though. The main one being anything with a cube and hitting a cube. If you can hit a cube and still do whatever your leader requires for you to do damage, you'll likely be able to kill her without too much trouble. If you can't do that though, you're gonna have to sit here and wait the five turns out to get over this, and at that point she might just kill you with a high damage hit. And especially if you get her low, she will hit you very very hard and likely kill you. Alright, now that goes over how to get Murr, but how to evolve her, because everybody wants mini Murr or at least everybody wants the third version of Murr. Because Murr is actually one of the strongest free things in the entire game. She is absolutely crazy as a leader and pretty decent as a sub. So let's talk about getting her to her second form. Her second form requires a gem of Nordis, a large light gem, an angelit, and two light jewels. Nordis is likely going to be the hardest thing to get here. But since you were already able to do Murr's dungeon, I imagine you can still do Nordis's dungeon, as it isn't... I would say it's much easier than Murr's dungeon is. That being said, it is still somewhat difficult. Nordis does still have a lot of HP. He can also do a high damage attack when he's at low. Other than that, the dungeon shouldn't give you any more trouble 
than what Mer's dungeon did. So if you can get through that, then you'll likely be okay. So for anybody who's curious on how to get a large light gem, make sure that you go to the shop and then go to monster exchange and, and then scroll down until you see the large light gem. This will show you any of the required monsters that you can exchange for this large light gem. This one really isn't that difficult. Most of the monsters here are more obtainable than Mer or Nordis. So, after that we got the Angelit. The Angelit can be got from a few different things. The main thing is the Friday Dungeon. If you do the Friday Dungeon on Mythical, you have a chance of either getting a Angelit or a Devilit. Um, the chance of this is 50-50, so you might get one, you might get the other. Either way, I'm sure you can also do this dungeon since you were able to do Mer's dungeon. And then finally, the two Light Jewels. You can get the Light Jewels a few different ways. Sometimes Spirit Jewel rushes come around, other times the Chinese rush comes around. Um, you can also just get these from the Pal Egg Machine if it's an Evo Carnival going around. And you can get them uh, simply by exchanging them with other players. And for anybody wondering how to trade with other players, Simply click on the friends tab, go down to the trade button, and then select trade with all friends. Select what you're willing to trade for, and then select the item that you wish to trade. So this can be traded, a lot of people are more likely going to trade you for other jewels that they need. So if people have an excess of light jewels and you have an excess of water jewels, you could trade them that. You can also trade quite a few other monsters of the same level for the jewel. Now that you've gotten Mer upgraded to your second form, you can now upgrade her to her third form, which is likely her most difficult form to get. Potentially. Her last form is also very difficult to get too. So with this one, you need five jewels. You need a reincarnated godly knight of the sky virch gem. You need a angel of the secret destiny Ella gem, you need a guardian of the sacred city Athena gem, a loving heavenly deity Zeus and Hera gem, and an enlightened meditating god Sandalfon gem. So let's start out with Virch. Virch can be got actually probably one of the easiest ones, but he does take quite a lot to upgrade fully. Um, it's all just regular material, but you do need to reincarnate him, so it will take a lot of experience to get him up to that level, but you can get him simply by getting a Mystic Light Knight or any version of it. These guys show up in a lot of different dungeons, so you likely already have one. If you don't, then again, check this site. Be sure to search for it. They show up everywhere. Uh, Hera Willow's dungeon, they show up a lot in, and you can get them very easily from that. So moving on to Ella's. Uh, Ella. Ella is somewhat of a pain to get. She can only show up in certain dungeons. And there's just sometimes a chance that she will show up in certain dungeons. Um, the one that I found is probably the most consistent that she shows up in is honestly probably Cosmic Trinity, which is a multiplayer dungeon. So you're going to need at least one other friend to do this with. And it's on the Mythical Plus difficulty. So the dungeon is rather difficult and the odds of her showing up are rather low. So keep that in mind, but I have seen her show up here quite often. Also, I believe that she can appear in the Pal Egg Machine on certain occasions. I'm not entirely certain of that though, so don't quote me on that. Alright, now over to Athena Gym. This one is likely going to be the easiest one for you to get, as Athena's dungeon isn't that difficult, especially if, once again, you were able to complete Murr's, and you were able to complete Nordis's. Hers is quite a bit lower than those two. The fourth thing that you're going to need is Zeus and Hera, and Zeus and Hera is kind of hard to get, as their dungeon is rather annoying. Um, first floor, there's nothing really to worry about. Second floor is Minerva, which she can be a bit annoying, but again, nothing too bad other than her combo absorb. Once you get to the third floor, you have to take on Neptune, who just progressively gets worse and worse the longer you don't kill him, so be sure to kill him quickly. Fourth floor is Ceres, which really nothing to talk about here. Fifth floor is Hades, which of course is kind of scary, but you do have five turns to kill him, so shouldn't be too difficult for you. Once again, if you beat Murs, I'm pretty sure you can do this one. And then finally, it's Zeus and Hera. And Zeus and Hera are by far the hardest part of this as they have 50% resolve, and if you knock them below that resolve, they'll start hitting you harder. Or if you knock them completely low, 
They'll then do a high amount of gravity to you, followed up by them healing themselves. Now you can get over this in a few ways, and as I'm showing here in this video, this is how I got over it and how I used to get over it. Um, if you don't have anything with follow-up attack, and if you're wondering how follow-up attack works, there will be a link down in the description to one of my other videos that explains how follow-up attack works and what things have that. But even if you don't have that, that's okay. With these guys, they hit you first before they heal, so you can also use a counter-attack, as you can see here when I use Anubis. Now, you can use this with Anubis, Belial, and really anything else that has counter-attack on it. Um, it will kill them once they hit you with the gravity and you will not die because they hit you with 95% gravity So you really can't die from this um, However, you can die shortly after this and then the final thing that you'll need to upgrade your mer is Sandal Fawn Sandal Fawn is Also another one of those kind of a pain dungeons to do as his dungeon is rather annoying the biggest thing that I would tell you to do is not go with anything that is dark on your team. Dark is not going to work out well in this dungeon unless you have a lot of health as on the fourth floor which is in all fairness probably the hardest floor uh, you have to fight Raphael which has a hundred percent dark absorption for ten turns and at the end of his five turns he's gonna hit you for a hundred thousand damage. Uh, hundred and thirty four thousand damage to be exact so it's probably not best to have anything dark on your team. Sandalfon himself is extremely weak in comparison to the rest of the dungeon, so you shouldn't have any trouble beating him. Alright, now that you've got Mur up to her third stage, there's one more stage after that, being Mini Mur, who's even stronger than her previous stage, and is, in all fairness, probably one of the harder things to get in the game. Mostly just because of the first thing that's needed, which is the Spirit of Nemu of Light, Keely's gym. Keely can be obtained by either doing her dungeon, which is already extremely difficult. Um, there is other ways of obtaining this though. The easier and probably more effective way of getting this jewel is by doing ranking dungeons, as a ranking dungeon comes around fairly often anymore in Puzzles and Dragons, and they like to put these things as their rewards for scoring higher in the dungeon. Um, some of these can actually be very easy. The ranking dungeons that have came out recently have just required you to play them multiple times to score very high. Um, other ones do require you to get a high score, usually above 65 to maybe 75% of everybody else doing these dungeons. So once you have that, then you need to have a Diamond Dragon Fruit and an Ancient Trigod Mask. Now, a Diamond Dragon Fruit and a Trigod Mask are also very difficult to obtain. You can get these by doing quest dungeons that show up once a month, and usually they're towards some of the hardest dungeons to do, and you'll get them just from completing it. But you can get them also, well, you can also get a Diamond Dragon Fruit from the Thursday dungeon, but it's a rare invade from the Diamond Dragon Fruit at the end. Um, if this does happen, which there's a very low percent chance that this will show up, it's something around 2%. So you'll likely be doing this dungeon a lot, and this is the highest level of the dungeon, so it's going to be costing it quite a bit of stamina. But you can get one through that. And finally, the Trigod Mask seems that you can only get it through doing high level dungeons and getting it as a reward. So once again, this is a very difficult thing to get, but it is for the most part obtainable. So this one is going to be a very difficult one for you to upgrade. However, you don't necessarily need Mini Mer as the third version of Mer has more or less very similar stats and Awokens. It's just that the Mini one gets everything but more. So she's just a little bit better at just about everything. All right, so that'll do it for this video. I'm sorry if this didn't really give you exactly everything that you wanted, but hopefully this gave you some information that'll help you out so that you can get Mer or really to get anything. Once again, I would highly recommend going to puzzlesanddragonsx.com. Uh, I'm not affiliated with this website in any way other than the fact that I use it very often. I find it very useful just for looking up information about dungeons and about Evo material. So be sure to use that on any other sort of questions that you might have on monsters on how to evolve them, 
thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped you. If you guys did enjoy it, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below telling me what you thought of the video. And as always, if you guys have been having a good day, keep on having a good day. If you guys have been having a bad day, well, I hope this video made your day just a little bit better. I'll see all of you guys next time. Until then, stay cool, and bye.